And I told her, I don't care if he is her husband. Right now. It's time to rise from the grave, pour yourself a cup, and enjoy the coffee crypt. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the coffee crypt. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Calls for a big giant coffee that's mostly consumed already. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> that's you were you were tired. You needed it. I feel like I am perpetually tired. Like it's just part of existing anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I wear it on my face too. Like just like <laughs> the bags come and you know. <laughs> yeah. And for anyone watching who thinks that you should say this, stop telling people they look tired. Stop it. Oh, that's like the worst. Comment. No one wants to hear that. No one. So cut it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't read too much into it. How do I look tired? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm I'm definitely somebody I will say something back. I'll be like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you so much. Like I'm such a smart aleck when people say that to me. <laughs> you look sick. I just don't have makeup on. Thank mm. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you look tired. Well, I am talking to you, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, being around you is very exhausting. I'm going to start using that. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, it's always those, you know, when you have like a, a moment where you think back later, it's like, oh, I should have said that. Just, that that happens to me all the time. Great. Like yeah. that would have been the perfect comeback. <laughs> yeah, totally true. Um, oh, we had to slim some stuff down. There was a lot to talk about. There was a lot. And as we were putting together the show notes, I was like, <laughs> there's this story. Wait, no, there's this story. So we'll try to like, we'll try to brush through some of it um especially yeah. because not, not all the stories are meaty um sure. so we can kind of just uh, you know yeah. unless we get into some kind of tangent <laughs> not <laughs> us it's never <laughs> happened on this uh on this show <laughs> not at all um yeah so we'll start with some trailer thoughts um so if you're new here i really love shark movies like a lot um, especially if they're scary ones and not mm -hmm. funny, silly, bad ones. Um, so the trailer just dropped for a shark film called The Black Demon, um, which is going to be um, straight to VOD April 28th. Um, and it's essentially a story about, well, I think there's, there's a couple of things going on with it in the trailer that had me like, oh my God, this is going to be so good. So okay. it's essentially about this family. Um, they end up out in the in the ocean at like a, what would you, what's that thing called? Like it's an a, oil rig. Like an oil rig. Thank you. Yeah. Rig was the word I couldn't think of. And um, the people that are there got stranded there because there's like a demon shark or a mad shark, an upset shark, a cursed shark. I'm not sure. There's a lot of things There's going on. There's a lot of lore on. and rumors yeah, and legends yeah. about this creature, which is cool. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So the trailer, you see not very much of it, which I appreciated. You only mm -hmm. see like a few things here or there. It's a big one jumping. That one was really good. Okay. But the this looks ground. like... Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a more like serious shark film. Um, I'm actually really excited about it. What did you think of this one when you saw it? Yeah, I mean, it was giving me a little deep blue sea, but only because of like the being stranded in the middle, in the middle. of the ocean. Yeah. On like some kind of industrial, like in deep blue sea, they were like in an underwater facility. So it was very over the top. This is just like a yeah. simple oil rig, um, yeah. which I think it like scaling it down a little bit like that makes it a little more um, mm -hmm. realistic, a little more gritty, intense, grounded, you know. Um, I like the, again, any family dynamic, anytime yes. you bring that in, um, I'm sold. Um, and I'm just curious, like, I like that this is based on a real legend, right? It's what the trailer proposed, but I think, I think it is based on real stories. Yeah, the, the shark is essentially, um, an, an, for lack of a better term, like an entity that's out for, um, is it revenge? Like it has to do with like it needs something to be able to like be it needs sacrifices. It needs yeah. It's like, like yeah. takes like yeah. So and and then that's what it's going to take to like it has to have those in order to go away, basically. Um, and, I, and I wonder, right? Because I see, I feel like they're going to be there's. I was getting a little sense of like environmental kind of messages as with well with the oil, with the being on the oil rig, yep. and then like yep. sacrificing something if we don't you know, and resources and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm curious how it all is going to tie together yeah. with the script, but yeah. it looks exciting. You know, it feels like it, 
feels tense. Like you said, it has a serious tone to it. It does. I don't think it's going to be silly. And the bits of the shark that we do get to see look very real. They don't look, you know, (laughs) it's not like Sharknado where they like took clips off YouTube and put them (laughs) into the video. No, 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 no. (laughs) No, I think that's definitely. I mean, I think the CG was a little bit weird, maybe when it was jumping up and catching something or whatever. Yes. Um, but I think that's just because it's a lower budget production. It's going yeah, to this you isn't, know, VOD, yeah. Yeah. but it wasn't like egregiously bad. Where I was no. like, that's like a clip art shark. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it wasn't that. Bad. It's just it's a pixelated shark just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, no. It was um, you know, I, I think I think when it comes to CG, like my husband gets into these things where he he kind of like will roll his eyes if it's too bad or too obvious. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me that much because it's like I know that there's a budget restraint for a lot of these films, and I'm just gonna like <laughs> suspend my disbelief and just kind of like you gotta just go along for the ride. So even if it doesn't look so perfect, you know. Yeah. But but like you said, a lot of the close-up stuff, like the underwater stuff, like look good. It does look good. No, I think I think this is going to be really good. So be excited to. I'll probably mm-hmm. pay to watch it. Yeah, I, I like. Also, I like Josh Lucas. I think he's. Oh playing yeah, the, I was going to say that. Yes, I like dad. him too. Um, the rest of the cast, I wasn't. I was unfamiliar with like the woman who's playing his wife. But um, uh, yeah, I have no idea. And the other guy that they meet on the rig, like I didn't know mm-hmm. who that was either. But yeah, I was going to say that I do like him. He's good. Yeah, yeah, he's been in a lot. He has been in a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> He's like one of those yeah. actors that's just that like, you go so to their like IMDb and they've been in like 130 things or something outrageous mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff, but I like him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, what? so that's what April 28th, right? Yep. yep. Black and Demon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then up next, I, we were just going to, I guess there was more gameplay footage and more like stuff around Dead Island 2. Yeah, the um, official like cinematic trailer the, came the out. The official trailer. Um, yeah, and the and that's coming April 21st, which is my husband's birthday. Oh, cute, <laughs> yeah, which is also really cute because that, that was also Dead Island One was one of the first presents he ever got me, which is very cute. So, I, I had cute. gotten a PS3 mm-hmm. back, whatever we were in college, and then he got me a few of his favorite games, which was the Uncharted series. Oh, and wow, me, okay, but which I, I those were like yeah, those were like my, one of my first games on the PS3. I okay, yeah. Um, and Dead Island One, which I really enjoy. Um, yes. So what, what what's got you excited about Dead Island Two? I don't know. Everything. It looks so good. Yeah. Like essentially, it looks like it's just like an animated show or an animated movie. Like you get these these clips of because the. The trailer for it doesn't show like gameplay or anything. It's literally Mm -hmm. just a cinematic trailer to show you what it's going to look like essentially for like, you know, the scenes and stuff. But anyway, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going to be in um, like a bigger location because it looks like it has multiple things going on. It's got like the pool at the hotel. It looks like it's got like a boulevard. Is it in, um, where does it take place? Did it tell us that? I can't remember. Um, um, it is but it, getting prepared for a news story, <laughs> like, but I think it, <laughs> but I just think in general, I think yeah, it yeah. just looks so good. And the first one was a lot of fun, and yeah, no, I'm I'm like really pumped for this. I, I think it's I think it's gonna be really fun. Oh, yeah, I mean, what I love about the first one was the location, yeah, it was really cool, just yep. like zombie in this very like tropical environment, yep. Um I uh, I think like the weapons options were really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt like what I what I appreciate with a game is like the difficulty level where it feels challenging, but it doesn't feel impossible. Yeah, yeah. and I got that with Dead Island, and I and yeah. I'm hoping that carries over with the second one. Yeah, um, yeah, because it's like you know I just love the vibe of. Yeah. Like the survivalist. I mean, yeah, I, I know you love zombies. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do love um, zombies. So I think it's just like I like like kind of just that whole like role play of it. Um, but I think it is so I so see I'm seeing some clips here and I'm seeing like Los Angeles. See, that's um, what I was thinking. I was thinking it was in um like because there's like a sh- like a scene where they're like on where it shows like on a strip, like it looks like a you know like a um like a boulevard kind of. Right, like Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, yeah. you know, we're not just necessarily on an island. Not anymore. Um, I don't think so. No. No. So yeah. So some things that are it's including. 
So there's going to be a melee sandbox mm -hmm. kind of mode where it's going to be mostly melee weapons. Yep. So people who kind of like the hand to hand combat type stuff, yep. you're going to really be able to kind of enjoy that. Yeah. Those um, of us that can't aim very well in video games. <laughs> for those who can't aim. Yeah. Although I'm getting better. Uh, uh, first I'm part of used to be like the bane of my existence, but I've, yeah. I've started to get much better. Um, yeah. But it is in Los Angeles, actually. I'm uh, coming across Good that. Call. Yeah. Um, Beverly Hills to Venice. There we go. Beach. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. going to kind of explore. Um, they're calling it Hell A, which I'm curious huh. what that yeah. means. You know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff to um, unpack. And there's going to be a cinematic co op adventure, mm -hmm. which will be fun. Yep. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and I'm excited for like if there's going to be new types of zombies Specials, like we've yeah. had like bloater types like we had kind of all the classic tropes and i'm excited to see like what new things they have to add i'm sure they've added some yeah does it say by any chance if this cross platform um i don't know because it's I'm on gonna... everything it's going to be on uh p it's going to be on playstation xbox yep. and pc pc right yeah um obviously. i don't know if it's cross platform it may not be based it on how it's be. set up but like um uh, not left for dead the other one uh back for blood back for blood was cross platform like anybody could play with each other but yeah. i realized like one of the reasons i think it didn't do so well is because when you do that it affects the gameplay like tremendously yeah because and i'm a console gamer nobody come for me okay but <laughs> computers run games better than consoles do so the yeah. graphics and everything it's faster it's sharper it's and smoother. when you are playing on a PC and you're playing with people who are playing on an Xbox, then mm -hmm. it does, it is going to impact your, um, your gameplay. Yeah. So, but I'm just, I was just curious. Cause also when it comes to the controls itself too, That's because the too. thing about like when you're there's shooting, a, you know, with a mouse, there's you're no just lag. getting full 360, you know, you're just gliding with a controller. It's, there's so much more to coordinate. Yes. Um, and so, it's slower to react. The amount react. of, yeah. you know, yeah. So, I mean, I was just curious though, because Back for Blood, that was something that they did. And I remember being excited about it until I played it with other people that were on other platforms. And it was like, it, it affects the gameplay. So I was just curious if they were going to do I that. I think we played it together. Part. Didn't we do one video game where we, we played? Did, we did Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead. That's what we did. But we did that one on PC. All of us. We, right? You, oh, you were on PC too. I was. Remember? Because I kept like freaking out because my controller wasn't working. That's I don't know right. how to use the mouse and keyboard. And so I was like, oh my God, I can't play like this. <laughs> well, so that game got, I think it was, I was the last one alive, but then I, <laughs> tangent, but I got lost up in the rafters of the mall. I had no Stupid idea where mall. I was going. I'm like, I'm up in the attic. I don't know where I am. Mike and I are dead, dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sorry guys. Good I'm, time I'm though. That was really myself. <laughs> you know, that's how I would be in a, in a zombie. Like, all right guys, bye. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. but yeah. So Dead Island Two, I'm excited. Definitely gonna play it. Um, April twenty first. Will not be playing it on my husband's birthday because I would feel bad. But you should get him that for his birthday. I think that would be really funny. That would be. Oh, funny. and I got you this. Remember, I got you this game that you don't care about. <laughs> oh, what a shame! I'll just take oh. that back. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, so Hulu is back with some more horror stuff. Um, they have um, a movie called Clock mm -hmm. coming out on um, April 28th. Um, and it's got Diana, what is her name from uh, Glee? Oh, Diana Ag Agron. Agron? Glee? Mm, Diane. Yeah. 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 I was like super second guessing myself, but in the Agron, inside, I was yeah. like, you know, your glee characters. That's it. I'm messing up. Yeah, I'm messing up on the pronunciation of her last name. Diane yeah. Ag. Yeah, well, she's in it. She's the main character. And essentially, um, this one's crazy. So I've talked about this on here before and other places as well. But um, I did an entire anthology about reproductive rights. And this is definitely statement horror. Like, this mm -hmm. is 100% about the world telling women that they should have babies. When they don't oh, yeah. want them. 
<laughs> and so it's this this girl. Um, she's um, Diana plays the main character. She, you know, she has she's a, it starts out with like she's in this group of friends, and they all they, I think they all have kids except her, and they're like, no, but you want to be a mom, and they're like really pushing that like yeah you know reproductive like thing, and then it's like oh that's what we're made for. Every living thing's goal is to reproduce and. This whole like thing. And then it gets like, she gets, to, they're like, oh no, we have like, she's like, well, I don't really have a clock. And she's like, no, everybody has a clock. Maybe yours is just broken. And I was just like, so angry. So mm -hmm. angry watching this trailer. And then, um, yeah. And then they end up doing some kind of procedure. And I don't know, it gets kind of weird after that. Very like science-y. Do you, you watch The Office? <clears throat> yeah. That you, you recognize the doctor is, is Jan, Michael's girlfriend? Was it? I didn't even catch it was that. Dan. Oh <laughs> Which my is God. so funny. Such a different character. That is wild. <laughs> She's I one of my no favorite like, characters from The Office. Just so ridiculous. But anyway, I saw yeah. it. I was like, oh. I no, I didn't catch that. No, I didn't catch that. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, though, right? I mean, because this, the, like you said, it's it's so. Um, I'm sure so many women have had like shit like this said to them, right? Um. Like I mean, I even remember having people say like, even like Dan and I together, like because we were you know talking about adoption, like you're gonna have kids, right? Because the people push kids, right? Like in general, you know, yeah, just in general, um, yeah, so true. You know, and like because I, I I have people in my life who don't want kids, right? Whether yeah. it's just they don't want I know their, people that don't want kids, yeah, yeah, like they don't want to carry, you know, they don't want to like put their body through it, or they just don't want to raise kids. They just like doesn't you know fit in their plan, or you know, and. Sure. Everyone has the right to again make that choice. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but it is wild. I couldn't quite tell in the trailer like what the procedure was to like, like some kind of weird mind control, like to make her I feel. Don't, like I guess because my first, it, it because it's almost treated in essence like a um, like a fertility treatment, right? It's right, like, right. But it's for the mind. I guess to make you want to have kids to like make you because they have, they're trying to convince her that she doesn't know what she's talking about. Basically like right. you say you don't want kids, but you really, you really do. And we're going to show you that you really do. Yeah. I think this is going to be fun. I think this is gonna she be starts to see things. Yeah. It starts to get really like psychedelic. Yeah. Like, Ooh man. Like, I don't know. Um, I'm excited, yeah. you know, um, and it's going to be on Hulu. So Hulu, which is, yeah. And so, yeah. Don't have to pay to rent it. That's April 28th. Yep. Um, any other thoughts on clock? No. Well, I'm, I'm excited speaking, to be angry the whole time. Be... <laughs> well, we have a double whammy because we, we got do. clock <laughs> we and we got do. dead ringer, um, mm -hmm. which is starring Rachel Weiss playing twin sisters. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are on a mission to change the way women give birth um and they're i guess they're based in manhattan mm -hmm. um and i guess the idea is like because the trailer starts off with them like talking about like i guess a c-section or taking a yeah. baby out and i guess they want to like improve the birthing process mm -hmm. um and it seems like there's some like cloning involved a thousand percent right? that's the vibes i got yes right because there was like the animals and i'm assuming it's cloning but then yeah, like, i'm assuming still... they're not twins yeah. Oh, they maybe the way one's a clone of the other. Yeah. Um, that would be an interesting twist. Or maybe they both in the, are in the theory bucket. Um, we'll take bets. <laughs> it's the theory bucket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I'm curious. So yeah, it's like I guess, but I'm curious what they're gonna do because it's like mm -hmm. creating life without having to give birth, right? And I guess they're not looking at it from a gestational kind of like, no. right? It's like no. Test two babies. Yeah, no, I you know? yeah, I'm but with you. growing yep. outside of the womb, which, yep. which I guess scientists are starting to experiment with anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, which is curious, you know, which is interesting. It's it sounds it seems just like a different. It's not quite like clock in that. It's like a, someone's duty to have children, right? This is more about yeah. I don't know what they're trying to say. I'm curious. I mean, obviously, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where you have to watch it to really kind of like absorb what the message is. Yeah, it seems um, psychological. Psychological. I, I think it's going to be um, like a uh, questionable morals, you know, within like maybe how they go Playing about God. doing what they do. Playing God. Yeah. Um, yeah I like Rachel Weiss. I think, I think oh, this is like a too. great role for her. Yeah. I just rewatched Constantine the other night and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. 
she's fantastic in that. I love her. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Most, I mean, she, yeah, I mean, this is a silly, you know, silly Marvel, but she was just in Black Widow not too long ago. And I was, I did my Marvel rewatch and she was, so she's, she's so good. She's in that. I think she's going to be in an, another, she's going to play that character again coming up. Okay. Um, but she's so good. She just, I feel like she just elevates anything she's in. She's just, yeah, she's fantastic. Good. I really like her. So I, yeah, I'll, I'll be watching this one. Um, cause this is a series, right? Um, it's a series on Amazon. Um, Again, on April twenty first. So everything is like we were joking, we were laughing about that before you said April twenty first and April twenty eighth. Twenty eighth, and then yeah. Evil Dead comes out the April twentieth. Twentieth, yeah. I was thinking, I was like, isn't it close? Well, the Thursday to this? is the twentieth, so really the twenty first. The twenty first. But... <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, weird. Anyway. <laughs> weird. So it's gonna be a wild. Um, yeah, it's like three. Yeah, no, two weeks back to back of just like. New stuff. New appointment viewing for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm excited for Dead Ringer. You know, also the title though reminds me. Do you ever watch um Ringer with uh Sam Michelle Geller? It was like a CW show. It only no. lasted like a season. Um no. yeah, they was like they were trying to have her have like a comeback on TV and at that time, and like it was she was good. Um, I guess you know what I feel like it was for it was for millennials. But at the, but I think it was at the time when the CW was starting to gear towards Z. <laughs> so like the people watching the CW were okay. more into like the Riverdale kind of stuff. Um, so I feel like Ringer it just kind of missed the 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 time like the yeah yeah it missed the target audience I think yeah no that makes sense yeah I never saw that yeah no it's, you know, she was good I mean I'll watch Sarah Michelle Gellar or anything yeah Val me too yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what do we got on first in trending in our news stories? So this came up and I had to I had to ask you because I was like, this is this cannot be real. So mm -hmm. they are they're in discussions for doing an I am legend too. Yeah. Um with Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um okay. Um I, I did not like I am legend. Really? Um, nope. I am. Um, I I read the book. Mm -hmm. One of those, not all the time, but on this one. So I read the book um, when I was in high school, <clears throat> or maybe actually, ooh, it might have been middle school. Anyway, but I read the book, and I also am a huge fan of the Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price, mm -hmm. which is true to the to the novel it's way more accurate like to what's written and it's and and so i am legend is actually the third film to be an adaptation from i am legend the novel and so you know when when we got to the end and it ended the way that it did i was like i do not like that like i did not like the ending i'm not a huge will smith fan mm -hmm. um and I, I really struggled with how they looked because, you know, in the book, they are very vampire, very vampire. Yeah. They speak, they interact, like they look like people still like, and in this, they were like these weird allergic to the sun zombies. And I didn't like that. That really mm -hmm. bothered me because they were specifically supposed to be vampires. They are very yeah. clearly vampires in the book. So having said all of that, we were talking about this earlier because I was like curious because I was not a big fan of the, of I am legend to begin with. And so, but now you are saying we were talking about this, that they're not going to honor the ending. Right. Right. So they're going off of the alternate ending. Um, which I forget exactly what happened in the alternate ending. Um, I can't because that was like a special features kind of thing, and it was like okay, it wasn't the real ending, so you know, so I really don't remember. <clears throat> um, but I guess because he dies in the in the right, right he dies at the end. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, he gives we're... her the cure, the right. girl, and then he dies. And then he dies. So I, yep. I think he lives in the alternate. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um well so because... i don't know if they're related i don't know if michael b jordan's supposed to be his son like after because if he because obviously if he dies yeah. it's not his you know i mean so i'm i'm, I'm assuming mm -hmm. if he lives maybe he has a kid and then well and this said too though right that this takes place in the future right after he's already taken supposedly taken this um 
cure or whatever, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not really one that I'm super crazy about. I think I'm just mad that they're doing it. I'm going to be honest. Like, I feel like, you know, I really... I lo I've loved the book. The book is so good. It really is. And I, t I never read books before I see the film. Like most of the time I'm like, Oh, this is a book, you know, like I, mm -hmm. that's, but like, like most girls, I went through a vampire phase and so I was just absorbing anything that was vampires and that came up and I read it. And, um, and then of course later in a little bit, when I was a little bit older, I went and saw, or I saw, um, the last man on earth, Vincent Price, like, phew, come on. Anyway, and so, um, and then I remember seeing I Am Legend, and I think if you do separate it from the source material, if you make it its own thing, it kind of works, it's okay. Right. Um, it looks fine, it's, you know, like, it's sad, there's some parts that'll pull at your strings, especially with the dog, mm -hmm. um, and him talking to the mannequin, that part got me, like, first I was like, what a weirdo, but then there's like that one part where he like, bra oh, that part was so emotional, I was like, oh my god, like, that was sad. So, I mean, I don't know. I think I will see a second. It's, I actually really like Michael B. Jordan, though, mm -hmm. a lot. So I think that's going to be the big draw for a lot. I was going to say, that would make me watch it, I think. Yeah. So. Um, I think I think they're going to kind of revamp. I don't know if they're going to, like, change it to make it feel more like the source material in any way. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted that it's a, it's a sequel and it's so far into the future from where the original story takes place that... They're gonna just probably continue to do their own thing. I guess we'll have to see how it, it turns out. But wow. I think because of, uh, because it's Michael Jordan, Michael Michael B. Jordan, not Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, that, that's yeah. such an old joke. When he first came on the scene, everyone made the joke. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think just because of him, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, I do like or curious. Excited, I think, is too high. I'm I'm curious. I'll be curious too with all of the the thoughts behind it so far. What they do because. You know, I don't know. I just wasn't as big a fan. But you know, my best friend who's not into horror loves that movie. Mm -hmm. I am legend. Yeah, I, well, I think Will Smith is a big draw for some people. I think yeah. you having the emotional punches and those moments, you know, That's draws it. a lot of people who aren't into horror into the story. And there's um, some action, yeah. some survival stuff. It's not, you know, it's not as like um, straightforward horror. Right. So it's a more like a like a thriller kind of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the reason why my mom liked the walking dead. She wasn't, you know, I mean like she likes some horror, but it, that's the big, it's a drama. Yeah. yeah. drama. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so we also now got a, uh, kind of a set premiere time day mm -hmm. timeline yeah. for Crystal Lake, the A24 Friday the 13th series on Peacock. Um, which is going to be in, sometime in 2024. I don't know if they said what season, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. But Brian Fuller posted with the hashtag coming 2024. So we have a year. We we know that it's it's coming next year. Yeah, I mean, well, and there's been buzz about this since it started. Like people mm -hmm. are interested, and and it's so funny because you know when they came out with. Um, when they did the last Halloween movie, you know, there's all these memes that are like, everybody's getting a new movie. All these like series mm -hmm. are being redone. Or, I mean, I'm not serious franchises, you know, and, and the continuations and remakes and everything. And everyone's like, and poor Jason, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so um, I think now is honestly, like if there was a, a, like the peak time to do it, I think it would be like right now. And no, I do love, fine. we talked about this briefly before, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I agreed with you as far as like being like seeing where they take this because mm -hmm. this is before yeah. all of the things that we've seen. And so it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, how I feel about A24, but I'm going to give this a shot. I am going to give this a shot. An honest, neutral shot. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, well, A24, you know, they branch out. They branch out. They they well. They just won the Oscars with um, everything everywhere. Everything all yeah, all at once. Yeah, which is a very different kind of you know. So it you know it all depends you know. And plus it's TV, so it's a different format. I'm you know True. I'm curious. I love that um, it's going to be on Peacock. We don't have to like go anywhere. Like fit yes. 
And it's um, not because I don't like going places. It's I just don't have the ability to. So knowing that I'll be yeah. able to like watch it, um, you know, and I and I and I, I do like that it's a series because then they can take something and kind of really expand without making right. it feel rushed or. Doing and they could things. honestly, what would be cool is like we get all these prequel stuff, but then what's to stop them from doing an episode with like Jason proper and do like a flash forward? There's so much that they could do. And end that season on that note, yeah. Yeah, right? They could just be totally like, agree. we're going to do a Friday the 13th classic episode, and it's about more of a slasher, right? So they could do so much. Um, yeah. It's so no, exciting I, yeah. about it. Like I said, I, I, it very much gives me the Bates Motel vibe. One of my favorite shows ever. I love that what they do with the psycho mythology. Um, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah, and those, those again, Vera, Vera Farmiga, and then what's his name was so good. Um, the guy that played oh, Mormon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he went and did that doctor show on like ABC. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I have a thing with procedural shows. I'm just like, meh. <laughs> oh, he was really good in that. He has um, autism in that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm sure he's great. I mean, I you know, I watched I, I watched like the first season. It was very emotional, and I yeah. I can't. I have a hard time committing to long term emotional. You know, like you know, I can watch some stuff, and it's like an episode is emotional, or 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, or whatever of a movie. But like, if every Every episode. Well, I say that Joker. you know we just went through the Last of Us, and that was emotional from start to freaking finish. Right, right. but it was only eight episodes or nine episodes, or whatever it was. That's so. true, and it wasn't a medical drama, so and it which medical. is just a different thing. It's altogether. a whole different thing. But yeah. I, I just have been right. I used to watch procedural shows more growing up, and then like mm -hmm. I couldn't watch Grey's anymore. I kind of fell off of that, so I just don't watch too many of those like doctor, cop, lawyer. Totally oh, understand. Pose on, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Anywho, yeah. that oh, our tangents are so funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, how do we get there for a second? Oh yeah, because we're gonna backtrack. <laughs> oh yeah. man, too much. Um, but yeah, but we have an exciting one coming up now. Yeah, and this one I didn't know anything about. Um, mm -hmm. So apparently. <laughs> I didn't know this. So apparently there's going to be a George A. Romero documentary called about or tying tying to about Resident Evil, like about the so they released a teaser trailer for the mm -hmm. documentary that shows clips of kind of parts of it that have to do like it shows things like, uh, you know, um, pieces from Resident Evil. It shows, you know, clips and sounds and stuff of um, from Night of the Living Dead. And it's got you know, like the Spencer mansion, or at least the place that looks like the Spencer mansion mm -hmm. and um, all these tie-ins and influences related to night of the living dead versus resident evil, his involvement right. and like all of these kind of things. But it's a documentary um, that still didn't have, it didn't have a date. It just still says coming soon. But right. I think um, that's, it looks really interesting. First of all, I'm a huge resident evil fan. Yeah. Um, and I don't know anyone in our world that doesn't like George Aram. I mean, if, even if you don't, if you're not familiar, like most people at least know the name, even if oh, they yeah. haven't seen everything that he's done or the, the big stuff that he's done. And so, um, but yeah, this looks um, like it's going to be pretty interesting. That, I mean, I think, I think if you've played Resident Evil, I think it's pretty obvious that it was influenced. I don't feel like that's something that is just going to be like shocking to people. Exactly. But I'll be interested to see the the receipts, as it were, all the things that kind of connect the two and and learn more about the connection between Romero and Resident Evil and just Romero in general. I never get tired of learning about him. Yeah. So. And it looks just really cool because it's being presented it in like such <laughs> a stylistic way. Um, yeah, it's where... done like it's done like Night of the Living Dead. It's shot like that. Yeah, 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 and like voiceovers that sound like the Resident Evil voice. So good, and yeah, looks good. Yeah, no, it just sounds really cool. And I it was like maybe a year or so ago, I was just on a Romero kick, so I like yeah. had binged all of like the the Living Dead films that he did. Okay. Um, I started. I didn't finish it. But I started to read. Was it like something of the dead? It was a book, and it, it pretty much it pretty much continued off of his lore. Yeah, and I think it was like with his either like not his blessing because he I guess he had passed, but I guess maybe his like family's blessing, and it was sure. like used yeah. like un unreleased materials. Yep. Um. So just really cool. Yeah. So I'm super excited, and then uh, yeah, we both love Resident Evil, so it'd be kind of cool just to see the um 
again, the parallels, the history of the aesthetic. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, really interested in this. I, and yeah. I didn't know anything about it until... Yeah, I think I sent it to you like earlier today or something, right? It was yeah, like... Yeah, I never... From Bloody Disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you can, um, but there is a teaser trailer out for anyone who's interested to go see, to go watch it. But, and it does give you, I think, a pretty good taste on what it's going to be like when it's finished. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and the, the next news story, uh, I'm excited because I had no idea. Um, like, I didn't know about this true story. But, I didn't know this either. <laughs> yeah, the Blumhouse acquired rights to, um, I guess, release... Um, I guess they're going to do a film series um, mm -hmm. based on a true haunting that occurred in like the eighties, nineties to the Moffat family. Mm -hmm. So it's Deborah and Jessica Moffat in Southern California. And I guess other people were living with them at the time, other people in their family. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so this haunting occurred over the course of six years. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, you know, documented the article that we're referring to from Blade discussing actually has like, Pictures. Polaroids of like I guess like damage done to the house that must have been collected during the investigations. The Warrens were involved um, at one point, um, but there's going to be a, so I guess in preparation for this release, or I don't know. Actually, I have no idea if the two are related, but there's going to be an unscripted series that explores the haunting on ITV. Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting. I'll probably want to check that out just to yeah, like same. learn a little bit more from about yeah. the story. Totally. Same. Um, but just a little like like excerpt. Um, the story of Mr. Entity is one of the best examples we've seen of truth being stranger than fiction. Um, they've given. So I guess Deborah and Jessica have given access to access. like I guess all the records. Yep. Um, yeah. and so I'd be curious. You know, I'm always I'm always um cautiously optimistic when anything is based on a true story. Well, and Blumhouse is hit or miss in so many things. Like it's not even like, Oh, they do great at hauntings. Sometimes like it's, mm -hmm. you know, it really, they really can be a hit or miss like company. It just depends on, you know, and, and then you too thinking about like, and we talked about this briefly before we jumped on, but, um, or before we record, but you know, with it, including the Warrens, what's that going to look like combining with like the Paramount stuff? Is I think Paramount's who has, no, Warner Brothers. I'm sorry, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, is Warner Brothers has, you know, Conjure. And it's like, oh, like how do you navigate that? And then also people who are fans of the Conjuring, which I am, I like the Conjuring franchise. Mm -hmm. There's some duds. Um, But when I, you know, like if people who are in, who are into the Conjuring a lot, and who, you know, are just invested in those in general, kind of translating that into something like this that is, in essence, really similar because it's a true haunting. It's a, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's playing off of the same ideas, just right. somebody else's story. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's going to be kind of interesting from, like, a slightly controversial side of it is just seeing how that plays out because... You know, like you said earlier when we were talking about it before about like, you know, the Ed and Lorraine that we're used to from The Conjuring and what that looks like and how is that going to kind right. of go over into because it's not going to be the same. I don't yet. Yeah, they don't really say how involved they were. That's you true. Know? And it may not be involved in the films at all. I don't know. Like, right. We don't like, know yet, but. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Because they do talk about it. So renowned paranormal investigators and Lorraine, made famous by The Conjuring, were among those who attempted to help the Moffat family. So among those who attempted means it could have been a one and done thing. Like maybe, maybe they kind of, yeah, yeah. So like it could yeah. it could probably very much lean more into whoever the other. I was just going to say that. Yep. Were you know helping out? Yep. You know? Yep. Which would be the smarter option anyway? Yeah. Like they could, yeah. they could probably mention them briefly. You know, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, Ed and Lorraine, we're here or whatever." I'm sure they'll 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 work a way around it. But I'm curious aesthetically, what you know, like what's this gonna look like? What's it gonna feel like, right? Because yeah. a Blumhouse haunted like haunted house picture uh, film very much gives you like that insidious sense, right? Like, which is a very different kind of vibe from a Conjuring. Totally so, different. Yep. Um, I enjoy both. I, 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 you know, oh, I, yeah, I no, it, me too. I hope it's its own thing. You know, I don't, I hope it doesn't do something try to different. Be yeah. Make your own. Too much mark. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, I, I like anything that is based on. So, like, 
I go into most things that are based on true stories, knowing that like 99.5% of it is BS and made up. But I don't have a problem with that because that 0.5% is enough to make me uncomfortable. And right. so, you know, like I watch a lot of ghost hunting stuff. I watch, you know, like they're, um, Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures did a documentary called Demon House that I think is a total load of crap. But <laughs> if I watch it from the perspective that it's a movie, it's scary. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I'm able to kind of go into them like that. So and this wasn't a case or anything that I had any familiarity with. So I'm curious. Yeah, no, it's something new. And if anything, right, like I think, especially yeah. this happened with The Conjuring, I had known the Warrens or known of the Warrens, um, but The Conjuring made me like look into their cases. Same. So yeah, I'm excited same. for the fact that like, this is going to yeah. you know, encourage me and motivate me to like just learn about it, you know, which is always cool. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be, hopefully it will be done in such a respectful manner that the family members left won't be like, Mm -hmm. treated like crap or bothered or you know what I mean? Cause that's, you know how society is about stuff like that. It's like, right. You know. Right. And so hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully them allowing this to happen won't end up actually backfiring and causing them troubles. I hope not. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I always think about those kinds of situations, like with the Amityville horror, like, yes. you know, like Kathy and George Lutz, whatever they did to like solve the story, whatever. But I always think about like the kids, right? So obviously it oh, followed them as yeah. they got older. Yeah. Right. And like the media and all that. So, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, but yeah, no, so I'm excited. Mr. Entity. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're going to call it Mr. Entity. That'd be kind of cool. It's kind of a cool name actually for a movie. Yeah. I would, I mean, it would sell for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that there, cause there's other movies, the entity. Oh, that's right. The, yeah, the entity is, yeah. You know, um, um, so, but yeah, there's just like, yeah. Cause there's so much, it's like, it's weird to say like Mr. Entity, but that's just what they called it. But entity is so ambiguous. Like you're mm -hmm. like, what could it be? You know, like <laughs> so it just kind of adds that air of mystery. I it reminded me because you because you brought up the um the the, the BBC mockumentary. Ghost the, Watch. The, the, I was just Ghost thinking Ghost the Watch. same thing. It wasn't his name like Mr. Something or it was it Pipes? Mr. Was it Pipes? They called it Pipes oh, because of the noise. Pipes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't Mr. Pipes. It was just Pipes. Okay. It was just Pipes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was a Mister. Was there maybe a, there was a Mister in the Conjuring? I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> I don't remember either. Maybe though. Um, I'm trying to think. Conjuring Two. Didn't they call him Mister Something? I don't. It's fine. I'm mixing so many ghost stories. They all play. <laughs> they do, especially because it was like there was one hit of one was a hit, and then there was like a slew of them, like all around the same time. It's like, yeah, right, right. But yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. You know, our next news story. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I'm excited, but like, I don't know. Um, well, but this is still technically rumored, right? It's a rumor. It's a okay, yeah, so, true, true. So there is, um, yeah. So there's this rumor that Amazon Studios is going to be attempting taking a shot at Poltergeist, mm -hmm. which you know is a big deal for Steve and I. Yeah. You know, I well, you recently had your your remake episode about the Poltergeist remake. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and uh, I have feelings about that one as well. I, you know, yeah, things that I enjoy, things that I don't enjoy. Yeah. I think, you know, I think I think I think our <clears throat> consensus is the overall vibe of like yeah. not having the family dynamic quite as wasn't there. Yeah. Wasn't <clears throat> quite there as well. Um, yeah. as it was in the original yeah. um i think for me in the remake it was the um the other side i didn't really like how that looked yeah we talked about that you said it was like really generic very kind of generic looking like um i like the idea of him setting the drone through that was cool um i like the use of technology in the use remake. of tech was good like the cast again great mm -hmm. i know you guys talked about the cast on your episode this like, was very, i think the remake for me was just middle very middle ground yeah yeah i think yeah i think i, I mean think, it wasn't it wasn't awful by any i didn't think it was awful at all it just wasn't great no no and it just wasn't unique enough i think mm. like or like charming enough the charm was definitely lacking. Totally yeah. agree. But that's because in the original, you have that like Spielberg influence, which is so True. hard to emulate. And like, but it can be done. Like, I think like it chapter one and two 
is very much that Spielberg, especially, well, especially the first one anyway, not chapter two, but the chapter one yeah, not like gives you that 80s coming of age kind of Spielbergian. Warmth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think Scott was saying that Spielberg is supposed to maybe be part of this equation so, if, if it comes yeah. to fruition. So in Collider was the article that I'm referring to. Yeah. Um, which is referring back to a bloody disgusting article because what we we love bloody disgusting they they're, they're, they're yeah, pretty cool news so. um, but I guess MGM um, mm. was acquired by Amazon yeah um, so MGM obviously is the you know the owner of Poltergeist so in this acquisition they have access to it yeah um, and they want Spielberg to be involved at least on like a producer's level. Honestly, I think if they want it to be successful, they should do everything that they can to get him involved. They need to. I Genuinely, think. because that that direction is what's missing from the remake. It's completely dried in that regard. Like, it was not like, I don't know, it just wasn't the same. No, and it was also a very cold environment. Like, Cuesta Verde is that very, like, sunny. And I think, I think because you need that juxtaposition. Yeah. Whereas in the Poltergeist, the the neighborhood in the new in the remake was a very like abandoned development kind of vibe. There really weren't a lot of people around. Like, totally different circumstance because well, because in the original, the dad isn't like like cards aren't working at the machine. Like is a totally yeah. different setup. But some of those other things, like I think that was part of what was supposed to help us feel connected to them was this like bad time. And mm -hmm. he's trying to be supportive of his wife still writing, even though they are broke as a joke and like all these things, but it just, it didn't connect. I think the way that it was striving to, I think it just ended up kind of falling flat. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of my biggest complaints about the remake, which I do talk about in the remakes episode is that, um, their the parents didn't experience anything until the 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 stuff at the fan right and right. that caused a problem with me on a belief way because one of the reasons it works so well in the original is because the mom is one of the first people to experience something other right. than Carol Ann and so that's like you know that was good I liked yeah. that that worked you know well the whole like every Spielberg movie on some I don't know every but what the themes that Spielberg likes to play with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, we have to give Toe Pooper his due because he did direct it. But sure. um, still, you know, obviously the Spielberg influence Which there. I it's totally about... forget about. Like, I totally forget he's part of that. Right, right. Because <laughs> people tend to say Spielberg directed it. That I know. <laughs> of yeah. like Spielberg on set. Spielberg clearly had, you know, it, there was influence it, there. It was like a co direction almost. Sure. The way yeah, it was. Sure. But anyway. Yeah. What Spielberg likes to play with is, is this idea of like respect what you don't understand kind of thing. Like don't mess with nature. Don't like sure. Jurassic Park, Jaws, Poltergeist, E.T. Um, right. All of it, no, right? Don't right. mess with doing what you don't know. Um, right. And have respect for, you know, yeah. all that. So, yeah. and so like, with the mom, it was like, she was just kind of not taking it seriously in the beginning. She had the She's game. She's like, this is so kitchen, cool. Right? Yeah. So like, you don't really get this, like, really human condition mm -hmm. story, you know? Yeah. But my feeling on what they should do with the reboot, I, well, I have a couple of things. I think before, I used, I used to want an older Carol Ann story. But what I think they should do, rather than doing a remake, is do something that's set in the world of Poltergeist without trying to recreate it but I still agree. have that feel like yeah that'd be good. like the quest of verde incident happened mm -hmm. and it was it's on record of happening and it and yeah. you, what you do is like you have a world where you have this like like highly like recorded like haunting right yeah. because you have dr lesh's film yep. you have this all these witnesses say they saw a house go out go up in thin air like you yeah. have this like real event and then you play off of that and yeah. like, how does that affect the world that like pretty much the paranormal has been outed, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think you do it that way. That would but, be good. Yeah. I don't know. What do you have thoughts? What do you think? I mean, I think pretty similarly to you because, well, one of the things that makes it hard for me is I really did not, you know, with, with her, with the actress that played Carol Ann dying, and then, of course, you know, the release of the third and all of the, the stuff, right, that kind of falls yeah. around that. 
I think the more respectful thing to do is to tell a different story in the same world. And that, and, and I think that we've seen that in other things that can be done. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, it, you can still have callbacks to it. You can still have those little things like where you're like, Oh, this is like blah, 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 you know, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like I, I, yeah, I think, I think what you said is, is pretty, is pretty on point. I, I totally agree. I think they need to go take it in the world, do something like what you said, elaborate, like take what really, what happened as this is what really happened and then move on from there. Um, yeah. I think, and, and then too, if they do that, I think that opens up the possibilities to be also like a really unique film experience too, because a lot of these like continuations or remakes or whatever, they, they just do the same stuff over and over and over again. So to do something different in the world would be really unique and different. And um, I think more, like I said, respectful, I think to the original franchise, not that the remake wasn't done respectfully because it's very clear that the team that did the remake really did care about the project. It absolutely was not thrown together as this jump thing to make money. I don't think that at all, but I think that it would be a better, a better way of going about it to not retell a story that already has so many things connected to it and just go yeah. off of that and do something else. I mean, you could do something where like, it's the same, obviously not the same because so many of them have passed away. I don't know if there's any surviving um, researchers left. Um, but like mm. that school, right? Whatever. I don't know. If, I don't know if they ever named the school that they're from. Like Doctor yeah. Lash Marty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying. But yeah. like, you could have it be like them, like not them, but like the whoever's at the school now. You know, like something like that could be kind of cool. Um, and yeah, like you, you said, like, in the world, but yeah, just different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so many possibilities. We we'll, we will have to follow this and, and see what happens. Yeah. For sure. And we got one more news thing that we wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. It's you. I just did Poltergeist. Oh my god. <laughs> you know I <laughs> we'll, we'll leave this blooper we'll in. We'll just because... look on the camera and just smile at each other. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave this in because it's funny. Because you know, I just talked so much about Poltergeist that I thought it was mine. <laughs> That's really what happened. <laughs> oh God, I need to like learn to shut up sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> no, I love it. That's funny. Um, in the spirit of requels, reboots, and remakes, yeah. um, we have a little bit of uh, rumor news on The Exorcist that Linda Blair is supposedly returning for the yes. requel. Um, it was reported by Above the Line, which I don't. I'm not familiar with that source. Um. But uh, they were told that Blair was on set for just a couple of days. So she's going to have a small role. So she's not going to be a focus. But that's um, okay. I mean, Which is interesting, right? The fact that it's following her mother more I than it's following. I still don't understand that, to be honest. But I guess we'll see in October, right? Because Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because that's been the question this whole time. It's like mm -hmm. she's in it, but like where's Linda Blair? Like we're why great. is that not... Um, and it's, and you know, when you see her in, um, Linda Blair, when you see her, you know, when she's doing documentaries and she's talking about stuff, she obviously is not in like a, like a, I will have nothing to do with that sort of headspace. Right. Cause she very openly talks about her experience. Well, now yeah. she did have a, a kind of a dark face cause she went through a lot when she was so young because of the film. Yeah. But that's been the question this whole time is like, is she going to come back? Is she going to be a part of it? And how can they do this without, you know, it's like a bunch of questions. And I, I, we talked about this briefly when we were setting up to, when we added stuff <laughs> to our <laughs> roster and just talking about this concept of like marketing, like, is this like one of those things where it's going to be like, oh, we get a little bit of it, like little breadcrumbs leading oh, yeah, up to, yeah. to keep people talking, to keep people engaged, to keep, you know, and it's, it's not a horrible technique, but I does feel a little planned in my opinion, just that yeah. like, just you know, but drip drip of news and stuff a hundred percent yeah i think so because i think a lot of studios i'm mm -hmm. always like fascinated when things get leaked though or things like right um because yeah i i wonder if the studio does things intentionally like i was wondering with the scream leaks if they had yeah. to do that intentionally yeah. which 
almost now that I think about it, it almost considering what Scream Six is about, I almost think I'm correct in that. <laughs> yeah, but, you're not. The, you're not the only one that feels that way, though. I've heard um, people, that people have been saying that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, but I, 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 I get the idea of wanting to like have the drip, drip of news just because it's like it's March, um, almost or April now, um, May, June, July, August, and. It's We've a had a while. Six months. Six months is a long time, especially when you think about the interest, like the, the the attention span of the internet. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep people engaged and wondering. Um, so yeah, I'm curious. We haven't seen any really promote six months. Um, yeah, I'm curious. We haven't seen like, any like a poster, or, or like, but usually three months out is usually when things start to kick into high gear to bubble up and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious though, because you know what? After having rewatched The Exorcist recently, mm -hmm. uh, well, Halloween, so recently enough, um, <laughs> that was October, November. Is that like is that like month. when people say the other day and they mean any time between yesterday and six months? It's yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> so recently, six months ago, yes, um, I watched The Exorcist again, <laughs> and that, that's probably where my head is at. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's so much about the priest, right? Like as it much is, as it is yes. about like yeah. Regan and her mom, right? You know, so yeah. like I'm just curious, like how much story is there to tell? Mm -hmm. Um, like is it the same demon? You know, is it Pazuzu? Pazuzu? <laughs> um, you know, like I, I'm just curious, like, and, and I'm like, like, it's, I'm also wondering, like, what's the point of keeping the family around? You know, because it's like you could tell a different story, and they have, right? I mean, you know, yeah, no, that you're right, yeah. Three was a different story, really different. Um, then you had the beginning, which was yep. a different, well, connected, but not, you know, but you didn't still have different, yeah, still different. The the TV series, um, you know, I there's never different watched things you, the TV series. Underrated, it's good. I liked it. Is it somewhere I can watch it now? Do you know? I think I watched it on Hulu. Okay, I'll look. Um, it's just two seasons. Okay. Um, yeah, but um, but yeah, you yeah. know, so like the, the all that is like proof that you could do something different. So I don't know. I'm just very curious, you know, like because the trauma. I mean, it's both of them, right? Obviously, seeing your child go through something like that, but like I'm just, it's interesting. I mean, I guess it's an interesting perspective, right? Because you're really following the trauma of the parent versus the trauma of the child. Um, but there yeah. still is trauma, you know. So. Physically and mentally. Physically, mentally, all of that. Everything. So, and I like Ellen Burstein, so I'll, I'll watch her in anything. I mean, yeah, I'll be really curious. Um, this will be one that I will watch the trailer for because I want to see kind of what I'm getting into before like what I go the vibe see it. is. Yeah, this is one that I don't want to go into um, blind. Yeah, but I, I know I'm gonna have like little, little chills when I hear the the tubular bells, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah that'll be an interesting one. I am a little nervous because of who's behind it, but we'll see. Um, who's behind it? David Gordon Green. Oh, 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 right, right, right. Yeah. Halloween feelings aside, <laughs> that's the part that's got me nervous. Oh, uh, well, you know I dug it. I but... know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why you're nervous is why I'm excited, but that's fine. Yeah, it's fine work opposites. <laughs> that's right uh, but yeah so those are all our stories for today and just oh. hit, just hit an hour probably not, uh, actually a little under because we had a little if we had off. taken if we had not added or if you had not added those two this would have been like the shortest episode ever we nice. still have to do our recommends but and our recommends those don't take that long so um you want me to go first yeah go go ahead okay so my recommend for um this week is and i'm like 99 percent sure i haven't done this one already I just love people this like so much. I just want to talk about them all the time. And I have to check myself to be like, oh, did I already talk about this person? So um, if you're not new to my channel, the name Tasha is going to be like really what people are going to know who that is. Um, she was half of my series when I did Horror Bestie Breakdown. She and I are the ones that put livestock together. She's, um, you know, she's she does a lot with the horror world and the community in general. Um, she has sort of fully completely launched her website and is not just doing editing anymore. She now has a website dedicated to horror. So it's called the sinister scoop. I like that. 
and it's a little like scary ice cream. It's like the funniest thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, but she covers all kinds of stuff. She does, you know, horror um, interviews from not just authors, but filmmakers as well. Mm -hmm. Um, she promotes things like open submission calls for horror writing or I mean, um, writing horror anthologies. Um, I think she's working on doing re movie reviews and stuff, but anyway, it's a great, it's a great resource for horror in general from the book side and the film side. So Sinister Scoop, that is my recommendation for this week. Check her out. I will, you know, as always, th her stuff will be in the description for the episode. Yeah. I'm excited to check it out. Tasha's awesome. <laughs> Tasha's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Very, 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 very supportive of the community. So, um, yeah. so my recommendation is uh, just a YouTube channel that I've been like really enjoying lately. Um, yeah. Called the Final Girls, girls with a Z, not an S. Um, and yeah, so they're just a you know um, a group of friends who don't normally watch horror films, and so they got together to support each other through scary movies. And <sighs> Love it. Just like four of them, just chilling. They have like it's kind of really cool like tent setup situation. I don't know. When every time I, I'm like, where are they? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, where are they watching these movies? Uh, yeah. But it's really cute. They're fun. Um, so what they do is they talk about. The movie at the beginning, they say like what they know about it, whatever expectations. Mm -hmm. Then they yeah. react, and then they do like a little review, recap, thoughts at the end. I I saw them because they binged all of the Scream films before Scream Six, so that's how yeah. I found them. But they do like mm -hmm. newer films, older films. They've been really they crack into the classics a lot. So like the old slashes, like they just did Child's Play. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're just really fun. So I don't oh. know them personally. So this is just more of like a. Something These are that creators you just... I enjoy. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Great. check them out. We'll put the link in the um, description. Show notes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Shortest episode ever. <laughs> um, maybe, actually. <laughs> I don't we'll know. See. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I finished mine. Mine is. No, oh, I have like a sip left. I saw you miss it. I didn't think I get it. <laughs> <laughs> now a lot more no, i'm just kidding um just give me like an id of coffee um yeah cool well thank you guys so much for hanging out and catching up with us on this uh it's rainy here i don't know what your weather's like just but, a little chilly yeah um but yeah have a great rest of your week coming up and uh steve and i will see you in the next episode see you next time Thank you.